So last week was the last week of doing work. Well, actually, we all know it's not the last day of doing work. It was the last day of the winter work vlog. This week, we get to launch her. We go for a quick sale, check everything's okay, and put her on her new mooring. Then I kind of summarise all the things we did, what worked, what didn't work, what we liked, what we didn't like, and so on. I think it's the 12th of April and we're just about to launch Seahorse into the water for 2017. If he's up there being a good girl. And we've got Steve and Richard helping us today. Well, we hope the new sea cops actually work or we'll be coming out pretty quick. We can have some lunch. <coughs> okay, so we've launched. We were the first one of the day, so we had to get it kind of done reasonably quick. Um, yes, that's still more. I've just popped out the cabin and Ian's heading straight for a boy. It's fine, he's just testing the autopilot, still working at the moment. Got the sails up. It's a Tuesday in April and I've honestly seen about seven people sailing out on their boats in just a short space of the river, which is really lovely. I think it's on sail to wind at the moment, which is why we're going in a strange direction. There you go. She looks beautiful. So here we are on our new mooring, somewhere different this time. We are near the sort of viewing platform at St Mary's Island, just there. And we're near the Wilsonian Sailing Club where Ian tries to dinky sail. So we've got quite a nice things to look at. We're waiting for Steve to come and get us. Work very hard, bless him, all morning. So it's Good Friday. Boat's been in the water for uh, what is that, three days? So it's kind of a fun up, really, to uh, check she's still afloat. Um, and to kind of go over all the things we did. I'll try to, try to show you kind of what worked, what didn't work, what we like, what we don't like. Well, there's nothing we don't like, so that's quite easy. Um, yeah. Okay, so there she is. I'm just gonna come up alongside and hook myself on, um, which I'm not gonna be able to film, because of course I need like three hands to do that anyway. But I thought I'd just mention, the painter on your boat, or your dinghy, tie a loop on the end. It makes it so much easier. I'm just gonna come up alongside, throw that loop over one of the deck cleats, and I'm on, aren't I? No messing around. It's worth doing.
Okay, so the first thing we're pleased with, these, the, the staining on these handles and stuff. We had to do it on the handles, we had to do it on the tiller, but we kind of done it on all the woodwork because there's not much woodwork. Um, and it really adds, adds to the boat, looks good. The next thing we're pleased with was this hatch. Do you remember I measured the size and then I was a bit worried that it was all going to be a bit too big? Look at that, goes all the way back, perfect. Don't know how much easier that is than when you're having to drag it and scrape it and hard work. I should point out as well, I found the bands. You don't know about the bands. When we came to launch, I always like to make sure I've got the sails on board, just in case there's engine problems that you're not aware of. So I'll put our cruising jib up, no battens for it. I found them now. I had to cut up the only spare battens I have in the garage, which of course you keep for a day like that. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't feel bad about it because that's what you have spare things for, isn't it? To use them. But they were all too long. All, all not quite twice as long. So I had to cut off like you know, two thirds of a batten off of each one to make them fit. We had, we had one launch, one very short test sail to make sure the boat was okay. And of course now, I've found the proper buttons. Anyway, let's get down below. So, now we're down below, I've run, uh, I'll remind us of a few things we've done. Obviously, we varnished everything, or everything in the main companion. Didn't do the V-berth, the v, v berth, I mean, didn't do the core, pack, core berth, but did the main living area, because it's all getting a bit tired, and, uh, various other things we want to do, so we want to do it. Um, and it's amazing how quickly you get used to that. Um, I mean, it just looks like a boat now, <laughs> so you kind of take that for granted. Although, you have to remind yourself, it was an awful lot worse. Of course, we shouldn't forget, in starting to do that varnish, you know, I had to remove all the bits of wood, and we had the hole that was in that bulkhead. So, that was a job that wasn't on the list. But, and when we, of course, when we first found it, it's very depressing and, um, yeah, you think of all the worst things, but the more we gave it thought, we realised actually it wasn't it wasn't particularly structural. We could do a good solid repair to make it more structural. Um, so um, so we did, and it turned out really well. Um, obviously, I'd rather it wasn't didn't have a hole, but um, I'm quite happy with the repair we put in place, and it made us do these these. Um, vinyl covered panels to go across the front bulkhead um, to cover up the repair but actually we're really pleased we did that it's kind of blended in the whole cabin area and looks looks much better for it so that was a real plus um, other real pluses engine sound insulation we bought the thinnest good stuff we could find because there really wasn't much space in our engine and and we couldn't there's a limit to what you could insulate because it's a very cramped engine space um anyway so you kind of you know you can i mean i've covered most of it up but there's places where you can't get to so it isn't a perfect sound insulation um and of course it's very hard to compare the sound you remember from last year to the sound you remember from this year but in our opinion it's much better um and although it was like 150 quid or whatever that sound insulation and a lot of faff trying to get it all in um, that was well worth it um, and we're very pleased with that and I would recommend that stuff to anyone that's in a similar position it doesn't transform your boat, it's not silent but where you had to speak in raised voices now to make yourself heard with the engine going any kind of sensible revs now you can just talk and hear and it's, and it's, it's got it down below that level where it was obtrusive to now where it's just maybe a, you know, still an irritation like engine noises are but it's not obtrusive so it's good Another thing I'm really pleased with, which kind of wasn't on the list, but um, as a result of something that was on the list, we sorted out the lighting. We wanted to do the lighting anyway, and put these LED lights in, and they're great, and I'm quite pleased with them. Um, the positioning and that, because we, we mocked it up to work out where to, posi put the position, you know, to position the lights, worked out really well, bought these cheap LED strips to go along the sides, add a little bit of bling to it, very nice, pleased with that. Um, but the bit we're really pleased with, which wasn't on the list, and it's a bit of hindsight, is I tidied up the wiring to the instruments. The instruments are mounted on this, um, what do you call it? The back of the coach roof, the, the bulkhead that leads to the, co <laughs> the cockpit. Um, and they come through, obviously, so you can see the instruments from the back of here. 
Um, and then there's all the cables from the NMEA or whatever the wording is for that kind of cabling stick out. And they always used to be run inside here. So they were run down underneath the companionway entrance um, above the top of the kitchen. And there was kind of cables everywhere and they sort of ducked down underneath the, the quarter berth vinyl panel. You, you, um, it was all a bit unsightly. And I kind of, and we'd kind of accepted that, you know, um, Hannah accepted it as well. As much as you don't like it, you kind of think, well, what can you do? Well, of course, when the roof panels were down, I'm doing the lighting, it kind of occurred to me that actually, although it's a bit of a trek, I could get the, I could route the cabling between the, the two sides around the companionway hatch inside the roof lining. And then, of course, once you've realized that, and then that stops it running along underneath where the kitchen um, worktop area is, sorry, the galley worktop area, I should talk, use the correct vernacular. Um, as soon as you realise that, you then think, well, rather than the cables at the moment come out the instruments go down, they can go up, and they can go up, and they can all go up inside the roof space. So where there's always that extra bit of cable you don't know what to do with, and and you've kind of got to root everything anyway, now everything goes up. It's all inside the, the roof space, um, and it's all so much tidier. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, another thing really pleased with, engine isolators. Unless you'd lived with our boat, you wouldn't realise it was completely workable, the solution that was on it, but it was just irritating. It is so much better now that the isolators are just underneath that panel, you just slide up. Much better. Big disappointments. There was a lot of reasons for getting the mast down, not the least of which was to change the rigging, which we did, and we did it in a very cost-effective way. I'm very pleased with the job that uh, Seven Oaks Rigging, I think it is, did. I can't remember. I will put... I'll, I'll flag it up on the screen here somewhere. Uh, very cost effective, very pleased with it. Um, they tested the, the things they didn't replace, really, really good. So that was good. But one of the reasons for getting it down was to sort out the aerial um, for the VHF because it's just got a poor range on the aerial that's in it. And we checked it all over and it all seemed fine. So I've left it up because I put it down to where the, um, where the cable comes down through the you know, through the deck, all the fittings there were badly corroded. So I thought, it's just badly corroded fittings. I'll resold and remake all those joints while it's out and it'll be fine. And I have, I've remade all the joints. Unfortunately, the uh, area was still rubbish. And I think part of the reason for that is somewhere along the line, water has got into the cabling. Um, because as I was, I obviously cut a fair lump off to remake the connection. The, the, um, braid goes around the outside of the, the, you know, the main core of the, the wire on that coaxial cable. It's badly corroded and I suspect it's got water in it. That's all just corroded and maybe it's just not it's badly shielded and that's why we've got poor range and everything else. I don't know. I'm no expert but it's a bit of a disappointment because now the mast is up, changing that area of course is a whole heap harder. But fortunately we have a back reserve area which is on just on the rear uh, push bit which is what we used all last year. And although you limit your range, obviously being at deck, you know, deck height, not a mast height, for the sort of sailing, coastal sailing we do, that's fine. So it's an irritation, um, but it's not the end of the world. Another thing I'm really irritated with, and it's all my, my fault, is this. I'll never fix that. Do you remember that? It drives me mad that. Last year, we had a piece of elastic go around it, just to stop it rattling around. And I can see me putting that piece of elastic back. Looks unsightly, but it does at least stop it rattling around. Although, I suppose I've still got time to go buy a catch. Maybe that's what I should do this afternoon. Excuse the noise. All the motorboat brigade are out. I'm going to start bouncing up and down again now in a minute. I'm sorry, aren't I? Anyway, remember, remember that? That was the list. We probably did... Half the things on the list, maybe a little bit more. There's a lot of things that we didn't do, but generally speaking, given the time and um, we've had a lot of family problems over the, the winter period to deal with, which has kind of curtailed the time we've been out to spend on the boat. Generally speaking, we started this project. We did a lot of things on the list. We got her ready for the water in just enough time. She's in the water. The jobs we've done, we're quite pleased with. Okay, there's frustrations with some of it, but you know, we're ready for another season sailing. And she's that bit better. 
and let's face it you never finish your jobs list so I'll just move those onto next year's job list and we'll, we'll carry on the game. Um, oh yeah, before I go, cushions, fantastic. It was Hannah's idea to do the cushions. She was adamant that she um, she wanted to get them done. I'm thinking it's a lot of money and it, you know, it looked all right, but really good. Um, thoroughly rec recommend Ian. Um, uh, the work he's done is, is great. Um, and it's and it's really raised the 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 kind of quality or standard of the inside of the cabin. So it's given the whole boat a bit more of a lift because they're kind of you know they're quite eye catching, aren't they? You can't avoid cushions. So really pleased. Anyway, I'm waffling on, and and I really want to go for a sale before I go to the Chandry to buy a catch. Actually, it's Good Friday. The Chandry will be shut. What can I do? I'll have to just go for a sale. So anyway. Thanks for watching. It so ends our winter vlog. This is it. We're just sailing now. I'll be doing more work, I'm sure. But I'm not going to bother recording it or stipulating it. That's it. I wouldn't say it's all been fun, but I would say it's been worth it. The boat is a lot more, is a lot better because of it. So um, if you followed us all the way through, thanks very much. Um, I've had so many great ideas from the comments and that we've had in the film. So. All of you that have contributed and commented and given me suggestions, thank you very much. Um, it's a it's a real help, and it's good to know that you know other people are doing it because I'm not an expert. The only thing that separates me from many of the people watching this is I'll just have a go. Most of these jobs I've never done before, um, but I'll have a go. So um, and if I can have a go, so can you. So um, if you've you know if you've got an engine C clock that's a bit you know tired or um, you're thinking your engine's a bit noisy or you know maybe you need to tidy up the interior of your boat just have a go anyway I'm Ian this has been sailing with the Foxwell family thanks for watching see you next week and honestly we are going sailing <coughs>